you've been involved in some very interesting work on group intelligence. It's sort of the opposite of groupthink, right? Groupthink has been blamed for all sorts of political disasters and horrible <laughs> right. corporate failures. Right. And what you're talking about in some ways is the opposite, right? You're, you're talking about a scientific way of understanding the way people interact with each other and forming teams that can make smarter That's decisions. Right. Yeah, so we've looked at teams and teams making decisions. We've looked at large organizations making decisions. And what you see is, is that perhaps the major effect is harvesting ideas from everyone, getting them onto the floor, having people talking about it, batting them about right. it, things like that. And that can be characterized mathematically even. Right. And if you do that, you get reliably much better decisions. Right. So for instance, we've been working with companies to do things like predict next quarter's uh, earnings mm -hmm. or customer demand and beating the ways they do it now by 30, 40 percent in terms of increasing accuracy. Right. That's a huge thing in terms of the bottom line, yeah. and it all comes from aggregating opinions in the correct way to avoid groupthink, as you said, yep. but also to avoid having one highly opinionated person who leads off in the wrong direction. This would apply to any organization, because right. decision-making right. is the heart of all organizations. That's right. You know, teams are machines for making smart decisions, but they're often very dysfunctional. We, we all have the intuition for it, yeah. but we can't really quantify it, except now we can, right? Except we have new technologies, which is coming out of your laboratory, right? That's right. So that's actually the really big change, is all of a sudden, these things that were a matter of talent and inborn capability yeah. and things like that, now you can begin measuring it and teaching it to people, you can make people aware of it, and you can avoid a lot of the problems and improve performance just very generally. Yeah, there's this famous finding that, that um, smart teams have a lot of women in them. Uh -huh. Another one of the findings is that people who have good social perception, that, that right. also kind of predicts being in a smart team. That's right. And that's probably because they can like read those social read signals. Read the signals better, yeah. And modulate that kind of conversational turn taking. That's exactly right, is, is, is that smart teams uh, are both the, the more women, because women tend to be more socially intelligent right. than men, right. uh, and and the social intelligent. What that turns out to be is they are, when they have a team meeting, they try to get everybody involved. They try to give lots of short sort of contributions. Nobody bloviates. Um, and people recognize each other. They go, oh, yeah, really? Just yeah. little short things that let you know that I heard. Yeah. And that seems to be the core of this sort of social intelligence is managing right. the signaling between people and the contributions.